and we're going to um, just do a very simple short scenario so that we can explore a number of different ideas without spending hours running tests. Um, let me see, I should be able to change the uh, panel again now. Good, so you should be able to see this and I can put the green screen back on. Why isn't it showing? Ah, let's switch it off. Yay. Okay, let's hope that isn't too bad. Never mind. Partly it's because I need a shave, I think. Yeah. Let me try changing that. Yeah, that actually looks better. Okay, we'll go with that for the time being. Okay, this is really boring. Hey, me looking at my green screen. It's not good. So I'm going to create a standard scenario. In fact, no, let's make it a career scenario, just to be different. We're going to start in uh, Rochester, uh, and we're just going to do a uh, two or three stations, uh, and then we're going to decorate some AI into it. So career scenario in Rochester, and we're going to call it uh, Twitch Test. Cool. Right. Just remember to never wear a green shirt. Yeah. Go for gold. <laughs> I'm going to make a scenario that even I can't finish. Hunters46, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. So we press create. We're waiting for the scenario editor to load into the game. It shouldn't take too long. see if there's a particular scenario that I quite fancy playing and if I can fit it in sensible time then maybe I'll do another scenario but failing that given it time it's already 11 o'clock so no probably not going to be doing another scenario tonight um, I will save that one up for tomorrow so uh, I'm, I'm crossing off ones that have been requested at the moment so if there's anyone got any more requests to add to the list please let me know yes there is a uh, you can teleport anywhere you like I shall show you that in a minute uh, right, so we've started a Rochester station, which is um, here. Interesting. So that's because that's where the default location for this station marker is. Um, so we just need to uh, raise ourselves up. So here we are at Rochester. Now, if you want to go somewhere else, then um, up here, you've got this icon, this uh, round icon. You click that, and then over here, what's happened is it's changed it to a list of all the places on the route so if I let's say want to go to Chatham I click Chatham and then I click this what that done done is it's updated the latitude and longitude there of Chatham so if I click a different one for example you can see they've changed their numbers so let's go back to Chatham and press this button boom we're in Chatham I picked that one because it's in basically the same area as Rochester which means it's already loaded if I pick one farther away so let's go to say St Pancras and click play what will happen now is the game will load and all the scenery will load around it. <clears throat> so this is St Pancras Station. It all looks a bit silly until the uh, textures have all loaded in and the assets have all loaded in. And it's even more silly if I actually end up being in the middle of the roof. There we go. So you can hear the sounds have even kicked in now. Okay, let's get back to Rochester and start looking at some scenario. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start, start our scenario at Rochester. We are going to drive um, to Gillingham, uh, which is uh, in the direction that I'm facing at the moment. We're going to drive with a class 395. Just waiting for this to finish loading because then the, uh, the performance will be a lot better. Good, right. So, first thing we need to do is get. Uh, I, I, what I would normally recommend is if you're in the editor, pin all of these open just because then you kind of know what's going on. It also feels like you're in the editor. So, this, these icons, are, this tells you you're in the uh, scenario editor, by the way. Um, if you're root editing, then you're using these three icons here. We're not going to do that today. So, leave it in the scenario editor. Um, if you find you can't change anything, that might be this lock down here. Click it and it will unlock the route so that you can pin it here. So, in this, all the stuff that we want here is in this middle flyout. We call these flyouts. Um, 
So it's uh, on the uh, on this icon. We've got locomotives. Um, so let's, for example, if we pick this uh, class three seven five and we just place it on the track like that. Yep. So that's a class three seven five. And then you just click it and you can delete it like that. So there's all sorts of different, and these ones are all drivable vehicles. So they're, they're like locomotives, really, uh, or end cars, drivable cars. What's the problem there, guys? Was there something wrong with the camera? It looks okay. Need to move the camera. Oh, sorry. Door. There's nothing for it. I'm just going to be in the way. So I better make sure that uh, you guys can see what's going on. So this icon up here tells you you're in the root editor. These three icons are for world editing. We're not going to be doing that. This middle fly out here on the left hand side has the main palette um, so that um, you can see what you want to pick from what you want to do. <clears throat> OK, so locos are here. These are all things that the uh, player could drive. Um, so, for example, I can click on one. Let's pick a different one just to be different. So let's pick the 466. So let's pick the Southeastern Blue livery. We'll pick that. Now, as I move the, cam the mouse around, it just snaps to different bits of track. And it will run up and down quite happily on a piece of track. And when I click it, then it clicks and it's now in there. If one place another one, click place another one. Mean to, I didn't mean to place that last one. So, if we click it, a little arrow comes up. If I want to change its direction, I click it. If I want to move it, I move it. I just drag to move it. If I move it up to another one, it will come. Not correct consist because it was the same unit, but that's not the point. So, if I click it, I can also press the delete key and it will vanish. Click it, move it around, click it, change direction and delete. So that's the basics of placing stuff on the track. Now this icon is your coaches of which in this particular route I don't have any because they're pretty much all powered units on this route but if you had coaches or wagons they would all appear here and they work exactly the same. This icon, the third icon, is consists. Now that's what we're going to be actually using because that's a lot, that's a lot easier um, because we can just do, um, we can play a whole train down and it will be the right formation um, without having to worry about whether or not we've, uh, we've got it right. And then doing it in one click and not six in the case of this one. So let's place a six car class 395 down. Okay. So you can see the whole train is there and I'm going to move it, put it where I want to. And in this case, it'll be on this track here. So click to place. Right. These blue arrows and things here, these are all sound sources. You can ignore those. They're... They're there to tell you stuff if you're interested in it, but they're just they're not useful for us in scenario editing. So uh, now we're going to. Uh, so one of the things you will find useful up here is this is this icon. There's two or three things. A lot of it is not particularly useful because some of it's been superseded. Uh, like some of these icons, you don't really need anymore because they've been superseded by a different view. And I'll show you in a minute. But this one is definitely useful. This is the driver. So any train which is going to move needs a driver, and that puts that little white circle above it. If it's not going to move, then don't put a driver icon on it. <coughs> right. Um, by all means, shout up on chat if I'm missing something or you can't see what I'm doing. Um, so we've polished the driver icon it. We've got a train. Now it needs to go somewhere. Uh, hey there, uh, Sork, Reese, and Jim. Thanks for joining the channel this evening. So, what we're going to do is give this uh, train some instructions. Now, this is going to be the player train. Right? So, the instructions we're going to give are basically, these are the instructions we're going to give the player. So, I just clicked that without telling you what I was doing. Over here, having had uh, at least one train that's got a driver on it, this icon is now available for us to click on. It's called the timetable view. So, if we click on that, it now takes us to um, this uh, map view here. Uh, and you can see I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, right click to pan around so if I can zoom out I can see the next station along the line 
then a bit further up here, another stage, and this would be Gillingham. So actually, I think we'll go to Raynham. That's a little bit further down the line, a little bit more fun. So let's do that. So it's going to go here. Up here, this is the uh, what we're going to give instructions for this particular train to do. And up here are the palette of instructions that we can actually ask for that train to do. Now, there's some other stuff on here that I'm going to go to uh, come to in a minute when it's more relevant. Right now, there's things like this box here. It's only got one entry in it. Cheers, Gary. Thanks for joining us. So, the next thing we're going to do is tell the player train it needs to go and do a passenger stop at Chatham on platform two. So we do that by adding a pickup passenger instruction by clicking it. And now we need to tell it to configure that by just clicking this icon. And then here, we need to tell it where that actually is. Now you've got two ways of doing it. If you click this drop down box, every possible place you can do something is listed in that list. Or you can click this icon and then you can click and you have to be a little bit precise how you click it Chatham 2 and now appears on there now for a first cut that's close enough there's other things we can do uh, to do that now this red line has just appeared this is the line the path that this train is going to take to do that now that becomes more useful cams in the way again <sighs> right let me move it down Hopefully it's not too bad down here. Uh, let me also uh, let me get rid of promo. Uh, in fact, let me get rid of the camera. You don't need the camera on this one. It's just going to be in the way. So we've got the red line here, and um, so let me just go back to clicking on here. This is where we were to uh, set the properties up for it. Uh, we clicked on this icon, and then we clicked on Chatham two and that set that path up for us so let's do that one more done another time so around the following the line here we come to Gillingham so let's go into Gillingham 2 click 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 on there and Gillingham 2 now you'll notice that the red line is now following us again now to get to Gillingham 2 we've actually gone into the wrong path though really because our line would be up here, not on Gillingham 2. So what I've had to, what I forced the train to do there is to cross over here. Now this is where you can very easily choose the wrong um, path. Do you have to do a pickup instruction at the first station? That's entirely up to you. Um, you could say your passengers have already loaded, it's ready to go, or you can say if uh, you want them to, you can say, well, now you can press the T key to pick up passengers. What I'll do is I will go back and add one of those in in a minute so that you can see reordering of the instructions if you want to. Um, right, so now we made a mistake here. We've gone to Gillingham 2. Ideally, we should actually have gone to Gillingham 3. So let's change that. So we click on this view here and we click here and we click here. We go Gillingham 3. So now if we check that red line, we can see that makes more sense. So we're going to carry on following the line around and go to our last stop, which is going to be at Raynham, which is Raynham 2. So the, the game won't stop you from asking it to do silly, silly things. And that's usually where you'll come unstuck. So Raynham 2 is our journey. So this is the entire length of the path that we want the scenario to uh, the player to actually drive. So. If this is the end of the journey for the player, we need to put a final destination marker on. So let's put a final destination marker. And it's all gone red. Panic. Oh, what's gone wrong? And we've got one of these signs down here. Something's gone wrong. Well, it's because we've just added another instruction. It doesn't have any instruction. It doesn't know where that is. So let's tell it where that is. Uh, and say it's at the same place. Now all the timings have come back. So it's auto calculating the timetable. We've got nothing wrong. All appears to be good. Now, if we run that scenario, all is fine. Now, Dark made an excellent suggest, uh, request there. What about stopping at Rochester and doing a pickup passenger? So, let's add a new instruction. Now, notice it's gone before the final destination, but it's gone at the bottom. That's fine, we can fix that in a minute. So, if we click the properties, click the destination, and we pick where we want it to be. Now, I can't click that for some reason. So I'm going to select it. Now it's Rochester 
three by the looks of it. If we get the wrong, get, the, get it wrong, then the red line will be in the wrong place, or it'll tell us it's actually not possible to route. Uh, so Rochester three. Now, what's gone wrong with this scenario? Got a red line here saying it can't do this. Well, the reason is because it's in the wrong order. Yeah. So what's happening here is it's saying I can get this far and I can't do this. Well, that's because it's supposed to be up there. We've made a mistake. So if we click that, and then we can use these ones up here to move it around the instructions. Now we get a pickup at Rochester, and then we can do Chatham, Gillingham, and Raynham, and then the scenario ends at Raynham. Let's put a message box at the beginning, shall we? So if we put a trigger instruction in, and let's move that right to the beginning, and then we'll undo that, and then let's type some text in here. So the text is, welcome to this test scenario, please open the doors by pressing T and then proceed to Chatham. So what we did there was we added a trigger instruction. So there are a number of options on a trigger instruction. I'm going to use another one real quick because I didn't intend to click on that. This is the bin. So if you tick something and then click the bin, it will delete. Now, click the trigger instruction again. So what, what have we got here? All I've done is I've typed into this box. So this field here says... When this trigger instruction comes active, how long to wait before we do the thing that this instruction talks about? So at zero, it happens immediately. If I put five seconds in there, then it will take five seconds before this box appears, which can be useful in some circumstances. This tick box, if you click it, will cause the train's emergency brakes to apply and it will come to a stop. This tick box, slightly odd, will trigger wheel slip to happen. Um, so you can use this to cause strange things to happen in the scenario if you want to or just pop up some text boxes now there are a number of different types of text boxes this is one particular type um, to do the others you have to use Lua scripting and that's a subject for a future tutorial similarly this box here is for um, a Lua script event to be fired off at this point uh, that we go on and trigger instruction is actually one of the key ways of doing that so We've got a trigger instruction, we've got some passenger stops, and we've got an end. It would be nice to say, congratulations, you've completed the scenario. So before the final destination marker here, we'll put another trigger in, and then just fill this box in here. So it says, thanks for playing, you completed this scenario. Good. So we've created this player service, it's got stuff, and that's great. What we need to do, what you would do normally now is test the scenario. You play it. Run it all the way from start to finish and see whether it does what did what you expected it to. In fact, let's do that now. It's only going to take about 10 minutes to do. So, we've pressed OK. We're back to the, the uh, 3D order. Notice all these disks have appeared. So these are the instructions that we've actually put on to the uh, train. Now, what we need to do now is press play. Now, here's something that a lot of people get wrong because, well, they don't expect to have to do anything else. Don't play the scenario. Okay, there's two things here that people get wrong. One of them is um, is this. Um, that train's driving itself, because I haven't marked it as a player train. And the second one is, you know, just signalling is all a bit wonky. And it's because the signalling system doesn't properly initialise when you press play. So, let's fix the player train problem first. So we press the control E key to get back to the editor. And now we're in root editing mode. Be very careful what you click, what you drag on, what you move. And then we'll click on this button up here to do scenario editing and get back to where we were. It's so the number one mistake I make whenever I make a scenario. First time I test it, I realize I haven't set the player train up to be a, uh, a player train. So the AI drives it for me. So down here, up in the top left view, we've got the timetable view button. So we click the timetable view button. Service 1 is the player train, so we're going to click on the, the driver icon and we're going to click this button here, player consist, and click that. We're also going to rename this to something really original. I'm going to call it player consist. Now, this one here is the service um, type, 
So I'm going to call this a stopping passenger service. What this juggles is the relative priorities of services. So when the timetable manager, when you're running the game, is trying to work out which train goes first at a junction, for example, then an express passenger would get priority over a stopping passenger, just as a rough example. So that should have done that. So we press OK. We now press play and we save changes and we run the scenario. Now when the scenario starts, the train doesn't move. So welcome to this test scenario. So we've got the text box and we press the one key. We're in the cab. We haven't restarted the scenario properly now. So what we need to do is press control key to exit out. When you get back into the debrief screen, just hit replay. What this causes is the entire route to be reloaded. Um, and all the signaling will be reset and then you know you've got a clean run. The right state um, for what's actually been done since you started the scenario. So this makes sure everything is properly initialized. You could probably get away in a lot of cases without having to do this step of coming out and going back in cleanly, um, but it's more often than not the cause of strange behavior. Notice now, our signal is green. So, and that's the way that it would be normally. It's only It was only wrong because we came from the editor straight into the scenario player. So welcome to this test scenario. Open the doors and proceed to chat them. So we we'll close that, we we'll press T, and the doors open. Maybe the doors behind open. Yeah, the doors behind open. Oh no, these ones did. I'm just not really patient. So let's get back in the cab, wait for the doors to close, and then we can uh, proceed on and to continue to test the scenario. So we do need to put it in forwards. Notice that we're on DC power. Clear the AWS test. The loco is in good shape. Doors are closing. And we're good to go. So next stop is Chatham. So what are we going to do next? So we're going to run this scenario and we are going to uh, add some AI traffic. Um, I can show, uh, I'll also show you how to change the weather patterns a bit. Um, <clears throat> I think what we might do is change the time of day before we add some AI traffic, uh, just so that you can uh, see in a different light. Hey there, Kill Bill. So this is just a short journey uh, going from London, uh, going, <laughs> London, going from uh, Rochester uh, through Chatham and Gillingham into Raynham. This is my home area. Now, this is a career scenario, so it's also important to remember that that we have to do some uh, tuning on the career scores to make sure that uh, a it's possible to get a thousand points, uh, and b that it's uh, that how we want to penalise people if they do if they do bad. Now the camera is switched off because I'm actually doing scenario creation and no matter where I put the scene camera it's in the way of some part of the screen so the camera is off until, the, uh, until we finish with this little bit. Actually while I'm testing the scenario it can come back so I'll do that now. So just stopping at Chatham. So you'll see that it says our next stop is at Chatham. It's uh, told us when. So we've told it how to do all of that. You've seen how to do that. So we open the doors. It's the camera. So, what comes next? Um, next job is uh, we're going to go to Tillingham. this stop done. Let's move on to Gillingham. So there's nothing particularly uh, strenuous yet. So some of the things that you can do to customise, you can change what the timetable is. You can make it easier or you can make it harder by just changing the times that you're due in at various stations. Um, 
you could make other AI traffic have priority over you so that you get red lights and or amber lights in front of you. So one of the things we're going to do uh, in a little while is we're going to add some AI train, uh, trains in. Some of them coming in the other direction, what I call scenery trains, and uh, some of them in your way, which are sort of more active trains that uh, are going to affect the players, uh, what they do and how they play the scenario. So we've got about 1.4 miles to get to Gillingham. It's always good, it's quite laborious, but it's always good. Every time you make changes, make sure you play the scenario again. It's all too easy um, to make a whole pile of changes because you think, well, let's just throw an AI train in, throw another AI train in, make a few changes here. And before you know it, the scenario doesn't work anymore, for whatever reason. You have no idea why it doesn't work anymore because you don't actually know what was the last thing that you did that broke it. So um, there are two bits of advice there. One, save regularly. Uh, two, uh, test regularly. Uh, and in particular, make sure you test after the key parts that you've done. So get the player train in and make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. Get AI trains in and make sure they do what they're supposed to do and the player can still do what they're supposed to do. And then we'll get static consistent, which are just things like trains and wagons hanging around in the yard uh, and then uh, final test and then if you need to tweak any of the messaging or you need to uh, add any other little effects you can do that towards the end uh, but test 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 uh, all the time because if you don't then you're going to have a big problem if something s decides not to work Hi HD, yes I am going to uh, upload this to the workshop once I'm finished um, and inflict it upon the rest. Cheers uh, Dark, see you later. Um, uh, Rock makes a very good point there to make sure that uh, if you're going to add AI I will change the time, make sure that you change the time first. Yeah, you can change the time afterwards but then you've got to go and redo all of your AI trains and set all the new timings up for them which is a pain and if you can avoid it you really should. So we're just coming into Gillingham, one more stop and then we're finished. And off we go to Gillingham. So notice we're not getting any score. So why are we getting any score? I'll tell you why we aren't getting any score. I haven't told the game to make these scoreable stops. I'll tell you how to do that in a minute as well. Yes, so a number or two, I will make the game have uh, stormy weather as part of what we do. That's an easy fix. from the level crossing I spent so much time waiting at. They had all this um, all this up over the weekend, I think, all this track, doing all sorts of work with it. So uh, it was in a heck of a state. <laughs> yeah, well, those wipers were recorded from a real javelin with uh, with water being sprayed on the window, so uh, it's, uh, there's not much more we can do than record the real thing. As annoying as it is, guess what? Sometimes they really are annoying. Oh, I'm in danger of breaking the speed limit. And even though I'm not gaining score for anything, as you can see, it will still take score away from me. So we've got two miles to Raynham.
we're getting there slowly. So now I'm coming into Rainham, which is our final station, and then we'll hopefully get the uh, the last message. That was Smarts Crossing, we just went past. My favourite train spotting point. It's really surreal having spent a while standing at Smarts Crossing watching trains doing this exact task uh, to now be driving a train will be in the game. It's uh, sufficiently spooky. Well trains breaking down are like static scenery items and then you just have to choose a different path for the train to go through. There is no reason why we can't do that, in fact we could do that indeed. First thing we need to do is get the time change and we'll change the weather um, and we'll see how that works. Chatham, uh, our dovetail HQ is uh, probably about a couple of miles away from Chatham Station, um, so uh, no, I'm afraid it isn't in the game. <laughs> right, open the doors and then get our final message. Prove that what we've done so far is good and then we'll carry on um, editing. Okay, thanks for playing. You completed this scenario, which is the message I added in at the end there. Good. So, now we need to go back and edit the scenario again. To be honest, the easiest way in is just to hit replay and press Ctrl E again. The sounds are different depending on whether the train is in the overhead seat. I would see whether or not, because I'm using third rail in this particular bit of the scenario, perhaps you are seeing the braking in the higher speed section where it will sound different. Right, so we're playing the scenario again, but this time what we're going to do is close this. Close this, it took a few clicks, never mind. Uh, and then we're going to press Ctrl E. Now we're in the world editor again, so we press the uh, scenario editor button here. And before I. It's that F10 key causing problems again. Editing the scenario will cause the current game session to be lost. That's because we've started playing the scenario, and editing the scenario always resets at the beginning. I'm fine with that right now. Now, before we forget, I'm going to switch the camera off. Right. So, let's get back up so we can see what we're doing. Now, first thing we want to do is change the time. So, the first time you go in to edit the scenario, you'll get this panel here. It is awkward to get back to it if you can't click away from it. So, uh, although it is possible, it's awkward. What I would suggest is if you ever want to get back to this panel, then um, simply re-edit the scenario. Come out and go back in and re-edit the scenario. It's the easiest way to get back to it. So here we can type in the description, which is what's shown in the um, scenario selection screen. So we've done that. Now we can put a briefing in. Now the briefing is what's shown on the F1 screen. So in the in the top left corner up here, when you press F1, I see the task list. You see the briefing shown. So let's just put the uh, put something simple in there.
So we just said make a few stops starting at what? Chest. Oh, we're doing this. Is excellent. Right. Now, this one here is the author, so I'm going to put my name. And this one is the start location, so we'll say Rochester. Now we have the um, the month, the uh, the date. Then we have how difficult it is. I'm going to leave the date as it is for the time being because it doesn't really have too much effect in the scenario. How difficult is it? Well, this is an easy scenario, so it's one. It could be one, two, three, or four. Um, four meaning very hard. This is not going to be a very hard scenario. Duration. Right, duration is very, very important. If your duration isn't shorter than the real scenario is, then people will not finish the scenario because they will say, I've got 10 minutes to play a scenario. This is a 10 minute scenario. And it's actually a 20 minute scenario and they get halfway through and think, I've run out of time, so they have to abort and they're not going to be very happy. Similarly, if you say this is a 50 minute scenario and it can be done in 10 minutes, someone might simply not choose that scenario because, well, I haven't got 50 minutes to play a scenario. So run this, this is again, we're running the scenario through and seeing how long it takes for yourself to play it and then I would add some more time onto that to round it up so this scenario took, takes about 12 minutes so let's put 15 minutes in just to be on the safe side but in the right ballpark right don't leave it as zero I see so many scenarios where the time left is set as zero and it's horrendous so the next one is the uh, start time now at the moment it's set at lunch time I'm going to set this at um, nine o'clock at night so 2100 hours um, so we'll, more have, we'll see what the implication of that is in a minute we've got to change something else having done that because now the player train it had it had a start time um, so we have to go and change that ideally you would say before you lay any trains or services because then the game lays all the new services placed on this start time so this is the weather pattern currently set to nice and clear there was a request to make it stormy Boom, it will now be stormy. It is currently set summer. This is the season. Which season do we want it? I think we should make it winter, just to be different. Um, I don't really use the class field at all. These ones are slightly different. So this says, is this a forced simple control scenario? Probably you don't want to do that. It depends whether or not you're designing. If you're aiming the scenario at complete novices, then you really want to have. Um, that set to um, on and then whenever anyone plays the scenario it will force them to be always in expert control sorry simple controls the opposite of that is this one which is for expert controls uh, it just makes sure that um, if you're saying move this arrow up here or move this throttle control down here if they've got the wrong kind of controls then those instructions aren't going to make sense so these are more used by our tutorial scenarios but obviously they're there for you to use as well Force cab camera, I am going to press that one. So that makes sure that when the scenario starts, the very first thing is it's in the cab. You used to leave Lua script to be able to do that, but that's now just a tick box here. Finally, rolling start. That's a subject for a different tutorial. It's a little bit more tricky to sort out, but this technique ultimately this enables you to start the scenario traveling at speed rather than stationary. Good, so we've made those changes. While we're here, there's some more changes that we can make. This little blue icon up here is only present for career scenarios. So if we click that, the card effectively flips over and now we see a bunch of instructions or configuration parameters for career scenarios. Start at the bottom, because this is nice and easy. This is a gold medal, a silver medal, and a bronze medal. And this is the score required to get those medals. So if you just change these scores, what I would recommend is you tune them up according to your build. Oh, sorry, to your the way you want to run the scenario. Uh, I can't really show cinematic cameras, Alex, because uh, that's something for the Lua scripting uh, side, because you need Lua scripting to actually cause them to start moving. Um, but that will definitely be something I cover, because that's an exciting thing for people to set up. I know a lot of people, once they figure out how to use the cinematic cameras, actually quite enjoy playing with them. Uh, so I definitely will do that. Um, now, there's all sorts of different parameters in here. Really, there is one important one, which is this one, which is the, sorry, this one, the arrival stop points. Sorry, the stop points. The arrival points. This is how many points you earn every time you complete a scored task. So you have to earn the same number of points for every scored task. Now, in this case, there are four passenger stops. 
So that means that the total score for any career scenario is 1,000. If you're going to earn four points for each one, then you need to earn 250 points for each one. So I'll just change that to 250. Uh, if you had 10 uh, scored tasks, then that would be 100. If it's, a ran, if it's an uh, odd number, so say for example you had three tasks out of 1,000 points, the maximum is always 1,000 points. If you had three tasks, then obviously the number is 333.3 3, recurring. You can't really do that. So what you do is you round it up to so 334. The game will make sure that you can't earn more than 1,000 points, um, but you do want the score to be representative of uh, what's going on. So uh, in this instance, we would get 334, then 334, then 332. 331. Right, so there's some other stuff up here, like for example the speed check interval, the uh, points per MPH per interval. So this is my nemesis speed multiplier interval and the speed multiplier. So, what does this mean? What this means is this is how many points, uh, sorry, this is how frequently it will check to see if I'm speeding. This is how many points I will lose at the start every time I'm speeding. So this is where I'm going to be penalised one point per mile per hour per one second. This is the speed multiplier, which I think multiplies up the score every time five seconds has passed. So after five seconds, it's going to double the penalty, which is horrendous. So we'll leave all these as they are, but this is where you can tune and tweak your scenario. Some of these don't actually have effect anymore since TS 2014 based on things like early arrival points and so forth because they just promote really bad scenario um, both creation and driving practices so um, anything like anything that awards bonuses pretty much has been worked out so that's basically um, everything you need to mess about with for a career scenario but we're still not going to earn anything in this scenario so let's go and fix that so I just clicked off the window there to get rid of it so we go back into timetable view We've got two things we need to fix here. One, you notice this says 12 o'clock, and then we're first start, uh, stations at 9 o'clock. So let's change that. So by clicking this driver icon and changing the start time here to uh, 9 o'clock, which I'll do in a minute. There we go. So that's 2100 hours. We now have a uh, that all now correct. Now, if you had already placed a load of AI trains, you'd need to go to every one of them and adjust its start time which gets more complicated if they're all see I was easy because it was at 1200 it was the same as the start time if I had an AI train started half an hour later I'd have to remember to add half an hour to the new start time of the scenario to get it still to start relatively in the right place right so we need to earn some score on this scenario so if we click that there is this checkbox here which is whether it's timetabled if you click that that score is now going to earn you points. So the key is anything which is a timetabled task is going to earn you points. What that means is that unfortunately it has to be a timetable task. Uh, timetable task. You know, so you can't. Um, it has to be something that can be timetabled. Um, so you can do go buyers, you can do stop ats, passenger stops. Um, so if you wanted to do it with a freight scenario, what you would do is um, have the stop ats. Uh, in between instructions so that you get time, time score but then you're also implying a, um, a time constraint on what the uh, the player is having to do then as well which may be exactly what you want to do so we've now got four scored tasks which are each going to earn us 250 points we already set that up and um, we can now come out of the timetable view so we've set the weather we've set the uh, season we've set the time of day We've set scoring up. It's probably a good time to give the scenario just one more try and see how we go. And then we can start adding some AI tracks in. Now remember, you press the play button, you save your changes, and then come out and go back in again. Don't ever run the scenario directly from that play button. So the first thing we notice is it's all gone dark. Now even though that light is green, we're still going to come out because we don't know what the next signal might be. And like I said, you can come into all sorts of signalling problems just because the signalling system isn't properly reset until you do this. So, OK, 
that why something isn't working and then you come back it the following day and it's all working fine and this is why it's because the signal system wasn't reset properly and it's camera time right so welcome to the chat and let's open the doors so we're going to open the doors oh it's raining by the looks of it let's get the wipers on because I know that people like the wipers on no one likes it in particular so let's go outside and have a look so everything's automatically changed all the lights have come on the sun has gone down and it's raining and it's raining you can hear the rain and indeed you can see the uh, the water effects coming on the windows there so we're coming up to the end of this so let's just make sure we earn our points there you go we've got a timeliness bonus of 250 some of the other scoring settings that you can set up there are uh, things like sorry getting ahead of myself there so some of the other things that you can set up there are um, in the career scroll scoring is how much the penalty is for being late and how how uh, incrementally that affects the score. So if you are completely on time and um, there is no penalty, then you get a timeliness bonus. Um, if there is any kind of um, negative score taken, then um, you get a timeliness penalty, even if it's actually a positive score that you get applied. That's just unfortunately the basic game mechanic. So I have got the headlights on but you can't see them with the javelin unfortunately. Um, so we're going into a tunnel. Now I'm only going to do the stop at Chatham. I don't think we need to retest the whole scenario. So now we're losing points. I even, can't even do my own scenarios without losing points. Um, so we could have affected how much we lost score by changing the um, the frequency and changing the impact. Now obviously you can't change the impact below one but you certainly could change the frequency so that perhaps it only um, started looking at hitting you one point every five seconds rather than one point every one second. So this is earning points. What it's not going to do is give me XP at the end of a scenario. That is reserved for official scenarios only, I'm afraid. Um, the medals you will earn uh, are now go on your list um, but um, you, uh, you don't get any XP for doing these scenarios. Otherwise, we can, we've realised that everyone would just create a very simple scenario that earned a thousand points and just keep playing it over and over again. So we'll stop. We'll do the passenger stop. Get our points, and then we'll abort and go back into the editor. And it's time to get some AI traffic added. There we go, we've got a bonus, and it's time to go. So, let's press Ctrl E and start adding some AI trains in. So once again, we press Ctrl E, and uh, the screen looks weird because we're in root editing mode, so we press this yellow box up here. That's better. Turn me off. You don't need to see me right now. Right, so if you've only just joined us, then we're actually doing some scenario creation now rather than driving trains, just to be a little bit different. So we're doing a test scenario on London to Faversham, just a short four station scenario, it takes about 10 minutes to drive. Uh, we've added the player train, we've set the weather, we've set the season, you can see it's all wintry now. And um, we've even set up some of the career scoring mechanism. So, now we need to add some AI trains. So if we start our first AI train in uh, in Raynham, sorry, at the other end of the line. So as I said before, we click on the circle, we go to Raynham Kent, and then we click the play button. Now here, you'll notice we've started off in this really strange place underground. So let's just go forwards and get out of the underground area. The reason for that is because we moved and we were at the same altitude as we were previously. But the world has obviously gone up. It's a higher altitude here. So if you find yourself underground, don't panic. Just look up. and uh, Or well, you might conversely find yourself way up in the air 
that the uh, the route has gone uh, it's travelled down relative to where you were before. So we need to work out where the right direction is, and I think we are heading west. If you need to double check, you can always bring up the timetable. You can always bring up the timetable view. So as you can see here, we're going to be heading sort of uh, northwest. So if we look there, northwest. So that's the direction our trains want to go in. They want to be starting on the left-hand side. And so we are going to now again go back to placing the consist. Let's make this a class 375. So what's that one? Eight cars, good enough. So the mechanic works exactly the same. Every train basically works the same way. I'll just make it to where we can place it somewhere that makes sense. And we click. Right, so that is a static consist. That will just do absolutely nothing but look pretty. Uh, what we need to do is give it a driver. And then we need to go into timetable view. And there's our new service. Now, this is where I need to. So how do we add? So this is player one, or our player consist, which you can see up here. We've got service one. How do we add instructions? That's where this drop down box comes in. You can now pick from any of the services that you want to do. So you click service one. These are the instructions that service one is going to have. Oh, that's horrendous news, Jamie. I should carry on. And so, we are going to stop this train in Gillingham 2. Here. And we are going to then stop the train in Chatham. Passenger stops. And then we're going to stop the train in Rochester 2, and we're going to leave it there. Important thing to remember is wherever you leave your trains, that's where they will be forever. So you need to get them out of your way. Don't need to give an AI train a final destination. So um, that basically is that AI, tra AI train sorted. So let's add another AI train in, just to make life difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to start this AI train in um, Chatham. So we see this one coming in first. So let's change to Chatham. Jump to there. Now again, we're going to be sort of heading in a westerly direction, so that's the right way. When you jump to a different location, just sit back, wait for the route to finish loading. Once the route's finished loading, the game will run significantly better. Don't worry about those big chimneys. They're there as part of the route create uh, the route creation stuff. They like uh, guidelines. So now we need to add another train. Let's make this one a four six six just to be different. All right. So let's put this train in here again. He's on the left hand side because that's standard operating practice. Click a driver icon and stick that on there. Timetable mode. And now we need to go to service. Two. Now, where is service two? Of course, I can see it there, but let's say we couldn't see it. That's where some of these icons here come in. So, this icon here is um, jumped the train. So, we now know exactly where it is. This icon here tells us, takes us to the whole path. So, let's just go back to the player con system. We click that, it zooms out to show us um, where that train is going to go. So, it's this path here. So Back to service two, jump to the train. Right, so Chatham one. Now you are going to head this way, and let's stop you in Rochester one. So let's do a platform stop in Rochester one. Job done. Right. So we've added some AI train coming in the other direction. So I call I tend generally call that scenery AI. Now. We need to test some of that, but before we do that, let's get some static AI in. So let's go to Gillingham. Now there's a uh, there's another line down the side here that we haven't done anything with at all. So don't forget to put things on the destination. That's an excellent point. We'll go back and customize the trains in a minute. So let's go and put a uh, a 375 in here.
So we're going to not, not going to put a, dis, uh, a driver icon on there, so that it's just going to sit there and do its thing. And what we're going to do is it's actually a, uh, a depot siding over here. So we're going to put a uh, another train here. That's a nine car, three plus three. Trying to find a short one. It's not going to be my friend, is it? No. Okay. Let's stick a four six six in the uh, in the siding up here, and then a bit further down here. I'm going to stick another one of these 375s in here. Maybe we'll stick them in the cleaner. I'll put another one in there. So, just splattered some AI trains, some static consists around just to make the place feel a little bit more alive. So, let's give that a try um, and see how we're doing. So, again, we press start. I know the route quite well. I did. Uh, I was around when they did that. I didn't actually work on the route, but uh, I live in the area, so that helps. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to exit, as per my previous advice, and then come back in again. And again, we're not going to run the scenario fully. Let's put the camera back on. We're not going to run this scenario fully. We're just going to uh, prove some of the stuff is actually working. We can fly around the route just to see the other AI trains. There we go, right. So, open the doors. Let's put it in forwards and get the AWS reset done. Put the wipers on. Because I know Alex likes the wipers. Now what we should see, shortly, is an AI train coming in. So let's see if that happens. Is there a way to play an audio clip using Lua? There is a way to play an audio clip using Lua. Uh, you can play audio and even video clips using Lua. Good, we get our timeliness bonus and we can start moving. But I'm just going to move slowly because uh, otherwise we'll be in the tunnel at the point where we pass this other train. That would be a real waste of time, wouldn't it? Jack, if you drop me an email, I'll uh, send you some advice. I presume that you know how to use Lua, um, and I'll just send you the details of what you need to do. So it looks to me like we have a train coming in the other direction. There we go. So we've got AI trains. So this is a train driving itself, or being driven by the computer. And we started already, this network is starting to feel more alive. So we'll go to chatting. In fact, I think what we'll do this time is we'll actually go to Gillingham so that we can see the static AI we've placed as well. You can place AO trains to start them basically anywhere. I would be cautious about packing things in too tightly uh, and probably make sure that you only start the network the way that it would have got there. So don't put more than one train in a single block um, because uh, that can cause all sorts of problems with the signaling dispatcher, really not knowing how to deal with the, um, the number of trains it's got in a block. Um, because that would have just never happened in the first place. Uh, and that's another place that is generally uh, commonly wrong. People throw down a bunch of trains and then the uh, dispatcher doesn't know what to do with it. So make sure you put one train in a single block. Is there any documentation for TS Lua somewhere? Uh, I did some Lua on Gary's one. Um, there isn't any documentation, I'm afraid. Um, 
It's one of the things on our wish list we're trying to fix. Uh, but I am going to do Lua scripting in one of these videos. Uh, I'm going to basically take a scenario, um, possibly this one, uh, and add some more stuff to it. So things you can do in Lua are, there we go, we've got permission to go. So you can do, for example, um, dynamic weather. Uh, so like, uh, if you look at the uh, one of the scenarios I ran a while back on the um, Western Lines of Scotland called Air Run, airline sorry um, that scenario is um, it's got dynamic weather that changes whenever you go so and the reason that that is uh, that the, the mechanism by which that is done is that uh, triggers happen um, and those triggers are causing the script to cause different weather patterns to happen you can do videos you can do movie um, you can do uh, audio um, message boxes with HTML in them, so you can do uh, images included in them, although quite limited as to what you can do with the images. Um, there's there's a lot of power you can get from the uh, Lewis scripts, um, so it's definitely worth learning. I must admit, uh, Jack, portals are a black art to me, um, and I generally try and avoid them because I'm just not very good at them. Other people have had a lot more success. I've just generally not had much success with them, and uh, I've been able to uh, manage quite happily without using them so far, so uh, I've never had the need. No, I won't forget the broken down train. The broken down train we are going to add next. And then I think we'll call it a day. <laughs> is this useful? This is the question. Is this kind of thing useful? Should I be doing more of this kind of thing? Or should I be focusing on driving? What do you want to see? This is nice and dark, isn't it? Can't see a thing. Let's turn the cab light on, so at least we can at least see the cab. Eh? You don't have to do that, you press L. Hey, there's that other AI train. That was the um, the first one we placed originally that started all the way back at Raynham. So we have two AI trains replaced, I've done exactly what we wanted them to, which is excellent. And then we'll just check in our, uh, when we get to Dillingham we'll be able to see all of the uh, static trains that we've placed. And then we can go and uh, cause some trouble on the network and then uh, work out how that, how we, uh, we change the scenario to deal with that. So if we look over on the right, there's that static service sitting in that platform. And then if we fly the camera down, we'll be able to see the other one sat over there. In fact, we'll drive past it and then we'll exit for editing. I want more points. <laughs> Good. So we wait for this passenger stop. So you'll notice that the timings have actually appeared down here. These are the timings that are on the um, uh, the properties panel, the instructions um, for that particular scenario where you say what the uh, the ETA is. All of a sudden, without the timed instruction being set, where it's just a guideline for when they expect you to be there, once you tick that time, it's now the time where you have to be there if you want full score. We set the DSD. Good, we've got 750. Now I'm not going to drive all the way to Raynham. I'm just going to drive past the uh, the depot at Gillingham so that we can see the static trains there. So there's two more things that I want to do to this scenario. Um, I'm going to uh, we're going to put a train in that's broken down. And we're also going to make it so that we have to follow another train, which is always where things get fun. So we'll do the broken down train first. In fact, I think given the what we're trying to do here, see, there's the uh, first broken, the first train on the right. We see some more in the yard over here. In the 
what we're trying to do here, I think I won't put the train in we have to follow because I think the uh, all the AI trains and everything running through a single platform um, is, uh, there we go, so there's the static trains, all good. Yes, I think, I mean, um, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't be doing ed uh, editing or creating scenarios every night, definitely not, uh, that would uh, drain my brain. Uh, I need to fail at some scenarios as well. So we've pushed press control E and gone into the editor, and now we'll go into the scenario editor, reset what we're doing. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a broken down train, which is basically a static consist, and then what we have to do is reroute all of the non-static consists, including the player, um, so that um, it all still works. But given that everything's going to be running through a single track around the broken train, it's going to make everything just a little bit more fun. So, um... I think Gillingham is where we need to put the broken down train. So let's click that, go to Gillingham, and press play. So we're in Gillingham. So if we put the broken down train on the player's path, so let's put a, uh, a six car 395 in the player's way here. Now, we have really ruined the scenario. We have wrecked it. Let me go and show you where we where we know we have wrecked it. Because now there's errors coming along. So we need to go to. Um, I won't put that on the wrong track. Uh, um, Chillingham one. One to three. Chillingham three. There you go. Chillingham three. I don't quite know why the game hasn't assumed that I can't do that anymore. That's interesting. Uh, so this one. What that probably means is that the game has worked out another way of doing that. It does clever things like that, and that's sometimes where you'll get you'll come unstuck. So let's go back to the player consist. Its path is indeed to go exactly that way. Now having put that in the plot, I think what I will do is I will um, I get confused now honestly why it's not more upset with me about that. Uh, what I will do is I think I'll put a driver icon on it because I think it considers driver driver trains a little bit more differently. Alright. Ah, now we broke it. Now we broke it. <clears throat> so what we need to do is route the player train so that he's going to come through Gillingham 2 and then it will route him back onto the main line again. So let's switch the Gillingham 3 to Gillingham 2. No, the game can't do this for you, I'm afraid. Gillingham 2. So now we're going to get into Gillingham 2 and indeed all the rest of the scenario will now work. However, these have been now marked of red. Well, that's because these times don't work anymore. And the way you fix that is you uh, untick that and retick it, and it will recalculate the new due time through there. And it's important if you're doing a career scenario to make sure that those are never read. If they're read, then basically the player can never achieve them, um, which is just not a good thing to do to them. It's not nice at all. Now, if we follow this red line, <clears throat> what looked like a really good idea has become a really bad idea. You can see this train is going to come through here and move into here and then probably reverse back out here up here and then come back out here and come forward. I didn't want the player to do that at all. That absolutely was not what I wanted them to do. Now what we do there is we need to actually be a little bit more specific. So let me look for a better junction. So it seems that there is no way to cross over. So this was a bad example, really. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we pretty much have to do that if we want to do this. That's not good. Right, let me think about this for a moment.
Okay, so having crossed over there, we're kind of stuck over there. Uh, and then they'd have to cross them back a little bit further on. Now beyond our, the length of our scenario, somewhere down here. Wow, I've gone on the wrong track. Really are stuck on the wrong track. That's the Sheerness branch. So your chance to turn back again is probably, yep, it's here, it's Sittingbourne. But that's beyond the scope of this scenario, way beyond the scope of this scenario. So that's fine. So you're going to be stuck on the wrong track uh, to get around this particular service. So uh, yes, Jack, uh, Jack actually makes a very good point there. You need to be careful with the track calls. So some of them are the directionality of the track. Um, and um, what that can mean is like I've tried to do, I could have tried to do this and it would say, sorry, you can't do it. And what you then need to do is override the directionality of the track, which you can do manually um, in the scenario. But it does start getting complex when you start doing different maneuvers like this. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is leave the player on the wrong track because that's what they would do. They would not give the make the passengers go uh, through all of these wonky paths. So um, we need to go to Raynham 1, not Raynham 2. So now we're going to be, this scenario has now become a half an hour scenario, and I'll show you why. So we're going to come through here. So again, I think what we've got here is something that's similar to what Jack said. Oh no, 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 it's that. We've changed the end of the scenario, and what we haven't done is change the uh, final destination. So, so yes, what Jack is saying is completely correct here. We have got a problem where the directionality of the track, which is used to guide the, um, the dispatcher to uh, making the trains go the right way. So, how do we fix that? So, if we go from Janil, um, now if you press the spacebar, you see the track has changed and it's now all these funny colours and things. If we press the space bar again, now we can see the directionality of the track. So red means it's single direction and the arrow tells you which, blue means it is multi-direction. So if we follow this piece of track uh, this way, <coughs> somewhere down here we get into a single piece of track which is only going the one way. There you go. Now that is why it's having to route the train a different way because as far as the track rule is concerned this train uh, cannot possibly go down this piece of track so now we get funky and try and fix that so this is the select tool and we will select there and we'll <coughs> move the track, get some track here and select that. Now having selected it, we can see the directionality and now we change it to oh. Now you'll notice that is now all blue. Okay, make sure you overlap so you don't leave any sections out. This is not changing it for the whole route. This is just changing it. Sorry, for the normal route. Um, we're just changing it in this scenario. So now again we start there with all the third rail on it does get a little bit more tricky to select as well so make sure you're selecting the track and not the third rail so let's click that and then change that to both that's now gone blue and then here what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm, I'm just sort of if I move the mouse around sometimes it can not catch up. Yeah, here we go, it's caught up. Let's just give it a chance to catch up with you. And you'll be fine. So we carry on going around. Good. And now we can change that to both. We're nearly there. Rainham's just down the line. Again, don't forget to overlap your um, your blue bits so that you don't leave any uh, tiny little one millimeter gaps in the middle. 
yeah, Jamie, having a late. Well, I'm just going. This is going to be the last thing we're going to do on this scenario. Um, this kind of thing is always where the scenario gets very interesting. It's also where it starts taking a lot more time to do. So we did the really basic stuff a minute ago, where getting AI trains in and customizing and tweaking. That stuff is the really easy stuff. This where it does start to get a little bit. Uh, you start making the route do things it's not intended to do out of the box. Uh, things definitely get a little bit more hairy. So I'm going to make this track go there, and we're going to make that both. So, having made that section both, so when you press F5, you cause it to recalculate everything. Now you'll notice the track is now permitted. The train is now permitted to go all the way down here. Yeah, so we're in good shape. So what's going to happen now is that our train is going to come along and at some point we're going to get, a, just before Gillingham here, we're going to get crossed over to run around this train and then we're going to remain on the wrong side. So what would be nice is to tell people this is going to happen. So what we'll do is we will go, so once we've done our stop at Chatham, we need to pop a message up. So let's put a trigger box in. And there we go. Uh, Easter eggs. I don't actually think there are any Easter eggs in the game, if I'm completely honest. Little hacks and hints. Well, hopefully I'll cover some hacks and hints while we're doing these kinds of tutorials. Um, there's lots of little tricks and things that a lot of people think don't realise. Uh, like, for example, not running a scenario tested straight from the editor and having to go back out and come back in again. So, so once we leave Chatham, we need to tell the player there's a dead train. So I've said there's a failed train in front of you and Jillian, you'll be rooted around it and run on the wrong line afterwards for a short time. So just a very simple message telling the player what they can expect to happen. What we can also do is I'm going to delay the start of service one, which is the first day I trained you put in. Now this service here is um, it's currently due to leave at nine o'clock. Now if I make that nine oh five then uh, what happens now is the player train should get affected by that. <coughs> Let's try that again. So it's 11.47 we're due to get into Rangham. Ah, hang on. So we're into Gillingham at 21.06.52. And this train gets into Gillingham at 23.04. So that's why it's we're not getting the, uh, the right effect. Oh, okay, that's because I put it in five seconds, not five minutes. So, we now are going to get into Gillingham at 2108. Let's see what the player train now thinks is happening. Now, we're being delayed. Okay, so we're going to get held up. Um, what I'm interested by there is that the Gillingham train, the Gillingham time hasn't actually changed. Ah, but what it's done is it's actually tried to be clever and route us a different way. <clears throat> ah, sometimes this computer, this uh, net dispatcher is just too clever. So in order to get us out of the way of this other train, what it's actually done is it's routed us via um, a different path so that we, uh, we can stop, pull out, and then go back around the train. So, we need to fix that. He says, trying to think of a way to fix that.
just trying to try something, see if there's an easy fix here. So we're now down to six minutes. Player consist. So the player consist. Okay, so if I tune in the times a little bit, we have um, changed what the uh, changed the way this is all going to work. That's better. That still implies we're going to get stopped. So we need to be at Gillingham for 2109. Push that a little bit further. Let's see where we go now. Oops, from one. Go back to player one. So we're going to get into there. But now we've actually triggered the wrong path again. So let's go back to there and change that back to 2100 or 2103. Sorry. Good. Right. Yeah. So the path is now where we want it to be. Right, so let's play that scenario through and see what happens. So this should be interesting. And it's always worth checking any time you make changes, particularly where it's particularly where you have any kind of interaction with the player service that you want to... Ooh, I had a crash dump. That's a good start. Right, let me fire the game up again. <laughs> oh, well, no, it's decided. Now is a good time to do an update. Oh, no, okay. That's just a sync. So, yes, any time you have um, AI trains in the way of the player for any reason at all, you need to be very careful what path is going on. You can... Uh, it can... The dispatcher will try and make the system work and it won't always do what you want. What you want the train is just to sit and wait uh, at a red light. It will have thought, well actually there's a faster way I can do this and I can run it through all of these different places. So you can add your own markers, you can change the um, track um, properties as I've done. Um, there are a number of strategies that you can use to, try, to influence uh, what the uh, system can do. Just firing the game back up here. So since uh, we were going to do it anyway, I'm just going to go back via the drive menu. I'll reshare the screen in just a minute under career because it's a career scenario. Oh, I'm done with the show. Touch desk, there it is. Down as a 15 minute scenario. We might need to tweak that later. sharing the screen again. So hopefully <laughs> this will work. But this kind of thing is where it's test, 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 test and test a few more times. Right, welcome to the scenario, open the doors and proceed to chat up. The AWS self test done. As soon as the uh, passenger load is complete, we'll make our way onwards. Uh, remembering, of course, we have a problem at Gillingham. So we're proceeding, here comes the uh, 466 we set up as the first AI train. And I'm already losing score, that's good, excellent job. Um, we've got to get into Chatham, so we're going to go through a tunnel. I've turned the cab light on just so we've got something to see. Because it does get a bit dark. Whose idea was it to do this at night? 
and the next one has to be during the day. So we've got green light, which is excellent. I like green lights. What I'm hoping is that when we get to Chillingham, we have a red light. Coming into Chatham Station now. We've got our points at the first station, we've got our points at this station, and then we'll see what happens when we approach Gillingham. See, of course, the AI train is already on its way, so it's, it's in our way, so we have to wait for it if we get there early. If we get there later than the other train, then it will go past us and uh, all will be good. Now, it doesn't even start its journey yet, it's still sitting in Raynham uh, until about uh, three minutes past. If you remember, that's what we set up. So it's currently stuck well and truly in our way, which means we should start getting a reduced signal aspect as we approach. Hey there, Sork. Uh, welcome back. So if you have just joined us, we're doing a bit of scenario creation. Um, Okay, there is a failed train in front of your Gillingham, which will be routed round it and on the wrong line for a short time. Okay. So for writing a scenario, it's always good to make sure you always keep the player informed. Um, if you want to give them uh, a surprise, then fair enough. But in reality, there aren't too many surprises really. It's, um, if there's a failed train, then dispatch knows about it and they would be telling drivers to be aware of it. Um, so. It's something to be careful of if you're trying to make things uh, fictionally interesting. So let's get sped up. We're on our way to Gillingham now, but it's a fair old journey, and the other train has already been 40 seconds out of Raynham, so I'm wondering if it's going to get to us uh, before, and that's probably why we got a clean path through. Hey there, Crazy Brooklyn, welcome back. So we're in the 50 limit, so we'll get moving and see what aspect this next signal is at. Ah, now you can see the next signal is an amber, which is good. That means we're going to get held. There's the AWS alarm. That's the sign of a slightly more interesting scenario. We want ambers coming up. Lights are on, but you can't see them from the cab crazy. Don't ask me why, but uh, that seems to be how it is on this loco. Now there was a red light there, um, so we do need to be a little bit careful of, the, uh, of what's coming up. Now we'll be passing, uh, another train will be passing us shortly, which will be the one that's in our way. And then we'll do the crossover into the other platform of Gillingham. So I think I can see a red dot in front of me, well, well it's either that or it's dirt on my screen. Yep, there's a red signal in front of us, so we just need to call up and stop for that. And what should happen now is that an AI train will go past us, and then we'll get routed onto the other platform so that we can continue around it. One good thing you can do, of course, in this area is you can just jump to the map view and then we can see where the other trains are. So here's this other train, it's just coming into Gillingham at the moment. So it's got to do a passenger stop and then we'll be able to proceed after it. Welcome back, Captain Ace. So we're stuck at a red light in front of Gillingham Station, um, where we're going to do a crossover onto the other platform, or the, uh, the other track, because there's a failed train sitting in Gillingham at the moment.
We should see that train coming past very, very shortly. Just reset the DSD because we haven't touched any controls for a little while. This is probably going to be about an appropriate time to sit at a red signal. You don't want to make players wait for sort of multiple minutes at uh, red signals because uh, there's no gameplay sitting staring at the screen. Um, we want them to stop for a minute at most, a few seconds preferably, just enough to have to make them stop and then get going again. It messes up their journey. So dispatch has updated our due, due time. We're not actually due into um, Dillingham until 21.09, so we've got plenty of time. I don't know whether I'm seeing things, but I thought I saw headlights coming around the corner. Here he comes, so the AI train is coming. And as soon as he's cleared the section, uh, we will be able to uh, proceed. Clear that DSD again. So that's that train, that's the AI train we originally put in, and now he's gone clear, we've got the clear to proceed. Now, we're going to be doing a crossover, which uh, has a speed restriction on it, uh, we can see on the hub, 15 miles per hour. So let's get up to there, and then we can slow down again. So now we're crossing over and we'll be wrong line running. And there's that failed service sitting over there, getting in our way. Now we're doing the uh, the passenger stop. So that's how you work around a failed train. Uh, it's really just put your obstacles in the way and then reroute all the services around it yourself, so that you end up with the the kind of experience that you want to give the player. Since this is the last time, we'll just run it through to Raynham and uh, finish the scenario.